Hoi oh, there, VC. Let's talk the Beatles. Um, I have a new segment uh, starting today where I go through all of the records of a certain band and I try to make my own best of. And I have some rules. Maximum three, three tracks per album and a minimum of one track per album. So every album has to be uh, in the best of. Um, and yeah, starting off is the Beatles. And why did I choose the Beatles? Well, mainly because I uh, I love the Beatles, uh, but I I thought that I um, I didn't really know all of their albums. Uh, and to get myself to listen to all of their albums, uh, I thought about what I should do to um, to get through the, all of the albums. And I started thinking, what about uh, having my own blog, writing about the music? So I started off by getting myself a blog and then I... Uh, yeah, I just started writing on the blog and uh, this idea came to mind. So here we are, best of the Beatles. Um, for those who are interested, there are Spotify links to each of these episodes. And I will uh, post a link down below for you to check out. Anyways, let's start. Um, the order of uh, the songs that I'm going to talk about are not from best to worst, they're just the best of the Beatles. Uh, starting off, one of uh, their best albums, in my opinion, uh, Magical Mystery Tour from 1967, almost has an intact book. The back side is very, very strange. The song I sh chose from this album is Fool on the Hill. And I have it on the Green Apple label. Okay, song number two of A Hard Day's Night. I chose First, my, my favorite song off here called uh, Any Time At All. Uh, it has a, a Rocky Erickson esque uh, sound to it. Or Rocky, I think he borrowed a lot from Any Time At All. A really cool song. Um, yeah, and um, as you know, the Beatles were in movies, much like today's artists like Post Malone and Spice Girls and blah, 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 blah. Uh, Anyways, um, this record was mainly written by John Lennon and Paul McCartney. I think John wrote 10 songs or something. Um, anyways, uh, and the time at all was one of the songs that um, I really didn't know before I started going through all of their albums and it, it uh, quickly became one of my favorites. Okay, next song on the list. This is probably Beatles' best song off of Abbey Road. I'm talking about I Want You, She's So Heavy, again on the green. Apple label. Um, this is not the Beatles' last album, but it was the album they recorded last. Uh, Let It Be was a later album, but they recorded Let It Be before they recorded Abbey Road. Okay, song number four on the list from the a record revolve and I f 
first shows. Tomorrow never knows. I have a cool flip back. And yellow Parlophone label. Um, and yeah, the Beatles took a technical grip on pop music. Uh, you know, they played guitar solos backwards and um, they made the music go slower and faster and tapes were dubbed and uh, there were many trips uh, on substances, you know. Uh, and there was a lot of interest uh, blending like Eastern music uh, and stuff like that. And I have a George Martin quote Their ideas now were beginning to become much more potent in the studio, and they would start telling me what they wanted, and they would start pressing me for more ideas. So uh, perhaps this was the first really trippier out there album, I'm guessing. Okay, next song. Again from uh, the Hard Day's Night album, Can't Buy Me Love. I used to watch that um, uh, that movie when I was younger with, uh, who was it? Robert Downey Jr.? No. Anyways, great movie, great track of... Um, a hard day's night. Uh, it appears that uh, Ringo, the drummer, is not playing on Can't Buy Me Love. Uh, at least on the stereo version, if you are supposed to believe the internet. I do get all my facts uh, of the website don'tbelievethesefacts.com. Um, and uh, you know Donald Trump he says he's, he's the best drummer in the world so perhaps it's Donald Trump playing on uh, Can't Buy Me Love uh, also on here George Harrison is singing on a song written by Lennon and McCartney and that's apparently not that usual uh, he's supposedly only do that twice and the other song is do you want to know a secret of Beatles first album please please me okay next song uh, is taken of uh, what many believe is the their worst album uh, it's called with the Beatles or well, Beatlemania as it was called as well uh, I'm not sure I agree if it's the worst album. Anyway, I chose the, the song All My Loving. And uh, with the Beatles, it's, uh, it's a mix of uh, cover songs and their own songs. Uh, uh, there are good songs like Till There Was You, You Really Got A Hold On Me, Please, Mr. Postman, Money, That's What I Want, etc. But um, Sadly, they're not on my list. Okay, going back to Revolver, another one of my favorite songs uh, called Eleanor Rigby. And uh, Revolver is by many uh, considered the best album. Um, the main influences on here are Indian music, classical music, psychedelic music, Harrison, McCartney, and Lennon in that order. Uh, I got a, a quote by Paul McCartney saying, One day, tape up, got the tape on backwards, went to play it, and it. Bloody hell, it sounds Indian! Yeah, pretty cool. Uh, next song is uh, Girl of Rubber Soul. And I have a flip back on 
the yellow polyphone. Um, there are some weaker tracks on here for sure, but this is a very, very good album. Um, the song What Goes On is not m one of my favorites, but um, uh, it's it's really kind of ridiculous how how, how high the standards are uh, on this album. I can tell you I um, chose three songs off this album and uh, when I tried to get uh, them down to three songs, there were actually nine songs competing on the three places on this best of list. But uh, yeah, Girl is one of um, the songs that made my best of. And uh, again, this is Rubber Soul from 1965. The last album they released, Let Be. Um, I chose Long and Winding Road off this album. Uh, very good song. Moving on to Moving on to Sgt. Pepper, uh, the first song I chose, A Day in the Life. Some inserts, and it's on yellow polyphone. Uh, another cool quote from Ringo Starr, Sgt. Pepper for me, it's a it's a fine album. It's a fine album, but I did learn to play chess on it. Anyways, um, A Day in the Life is a masterful song uh, written by John Lennon. Uh, I think it's the best song of this album. And it's, uh, of course, it has to be on a best of the Beatles. Okay, the ne next song is uh, of Beatles fourth album. It's called Beatles for Sale and I chose What You're Doing. Um, it was released back in 1964, uh, the same year as The Hard Day's Night. <clears throat> I believe three of the tr tracks are a bit too much rock and roll for me. Um, like Rock and Roll Music by Chuck Berry, Kansas City, Hey Hey Hey, Everybody's Trying to Be My Baby. And uh, that's not quite my my favorite Beatles uh, Beatles songs, um, and uh, uh, as you see, I don't own the album because I sold it. I I, I never really listened to it. Um, anyways, on this uh, record, they recorded six covers and eight uh, own songs. Uh, and the fact is, when you listen to the, the album a couple of times, there's not a whole lot uh, that sticks to me. I mean, you've heard songs like Eight Days a Week and, and uh, songs like that, but it, it never really stuck to me. Uh, no reply, I'm a loser, I'll follow the sun, every little thing, eight days a week. And I, I don't want to spoil the party, it was, uh, yeah, they were the closest songs to to be on the list, but I shows what you're doing. Okay, going back to Abbey Road, I shows uh, something, and I, another quote from Paul McCartney. I think before the Abbey Road sessions, it was like we should put down the boxing gloves and try and just get it together and really make a very special album. That's Paul McCartney. Um, of this album, there are two uh, uh, given songs that I have to choose, uh, but after that it's it's kind of hard because this uh, fantastic album. Anyways, um, there were a lot of songs that wanted to be on the on the list. But I chose something. Okay, back to Sgt. Pepper. Uh, I chose "Lose in the Sky with Diamonds," and we start off with a quote by George Martin. Pepper started because of their being fed up with touring and they wanted to spend more time in the recording studio. Uh, 
a very high pitch sound just before the end starts in a 15 kilohertz high frequency tone put there at the suggestion of John Lennon especially to annoy dogs. Contrary to popular belief the tone was only pressed in the first 5000 copies of the vinyl edition and was later restored on the CD. So if you're a dog and you have an early pressing you can hear that sound. Uh, I have a soft spot for when I'm 64. I'm guessing that's because we sang it when I was like 10 years old in school. Um, it's not good enough to, to be on my best of, but anyways, I just wanted to say that I'm, I have a soft spot for that one. Uh, and as with many of the Beatles albums, there are a lot of songs that are close to being on the list. Um, with a little help from my friends, getting better within within, within you, without you. Uh, but I had to choose only three songs. Off the Help album, I chose Yesterday. What do you mean? So you're saying that you wouldn't have Yesterday off this album. Yeah, yeah, right. Anyways. Uh, you might think that this is help, but it's not. Okay, we're go moving back to Revolver and the 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 Lord, <laughs> the tune. She said, she said. Uh, believe it or not, this was the last album before they stopped recording live. And there are a, let, uh, there are a lot of um, stories to why they stopped recording live. Um, uh, one, one of the reasons why was uh, because the audience were too loud. They simply couldn't hear what they were playing. Uh, yeah. Another big, uh, big uh, reason why because they were getting too big. Uh, and they were sick of playing live. They wanted to be. Um, uh, they wanted to have focus on on recording instead of just playing live. Anyways, the same trouble as the other albums. There's a lot of good songs on here. Uh, it's really difficult to uh, to choose. But uh, hello there and everywhere. I'm only sleeping. Got to get you into my life, tax man and. Uh, uh, in the end, uh, I chose between uh, Love You Too and She Said, She Said, and I chose She Said, She Said. Oh yeah, um, before they actually named the album Revolver, uh, they wanted to call it Abracadabra. Uh, there were also other title suggestions such as The Beatles on Safari, Magic Circle, and After Geography. Uh, and after geography, that's uh, a pun to the Rolling Stones' aftermath. Ha 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 jolly good sir. Okay, moving back to the magical mystery tour. I chose the song Strawberry Fails Forever. And the Beatles, uh, they made a, a movie for uh, TV and was shown on BBC The Christmas in 1967. The soundtrack that was supposed to uh, be released was planned as two seven-inch singles and they were also released that way in England. Uh, America didn't like that idea. So they recorded an album. This is the album. And the B-side was filled with uh, singles such as uh, Strawberry Fields, Forever, Penny Lane, All You Need Is Love. Uh, Baby You're a Rich Man and their latest single, Hello, Goodbye. I chose Strawberry Fields Forever. Moving back again to Hard Day's Night. I chose the song A Hard Day's Night. And I just realized his name was Patrick Dempsey in Can't Buy Me Love. And I had a huge crush on the girl, Cindy Mancini. Um, 
And you remember that dance that uh, Patrick Dempsey, Patrick Dempsey is learning before he goes to the school dance. Yeah, I've done that dance a couple of times. Uh, I should have known better, and I love her if I fell. Very, very hard to choose off this as well. Uh, anyways, I made my choice, and I am awaiting the whip from the pop mafia. Christopher, what about the White Album? Yes, of course, I have the White Album. Uh, obvious choice, Helter Skelter. Helter Skelter is just a track we did in total madness and hysterics in the studio. You know, sometimes you just gotta shake out the jam. John Lennon. Revolution 9, what a hit. Uh, on the last five songs of uh, on this album, I kind of lose interest. Uh, not, not because it's bad, but uh, it's kind of like... Uh, uh, you you get full. It's it's enough. It's 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 a little bit too long, and some some stuff is unnecessary. I think. Uh, revolution number nine. It will never never ever end. Revolution number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Uh, two three minutes of uh, yeah joy. Anyways, I choose Helter Skelter as the first song of the White Album. Uh, another song you have to have on the best of. Uh, that is when I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me. Speaking words of wisdom. Let it be. Let it be. I chose. <laughs> Let it be. I didn't need any help to choose the next song. Uh, act naturally, they said. Act naturally. It's not the best song on here. There's no need for act naturally on a best of and it's not the, the only cover on here uh, this is Miss Lizzy that ends the the album I always thought that uh, that was a Beatles song but it's it's not um, anyways uh, this is Miss Lizzy is also a very good uh, Danish rock band and uh, the singer Tim Christensen in this is Miss Lizzy is a Big, 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 big Beatles fan. Kind of funny, he uh, named the band Dizzy Miss Lizzy if it's not a Beatles song. Yeah. Anyways, I, I, uh, when I listened to this, um, there was there were some songs that I didn't recognize, but uh, um, they were really not uh, good enough to, to, to challenge against the, the big names. So uh, that didn't help. Back to Rubber Soul again, In My Life, very, very good song. Um, as I said before, the majority of this album is, is fantastic. Uh, so if you haven't got it, I suggest you get it. I've heard, some, uh, I've heard some outtakes of us doing I'm Down from June 14th, 1965, and at the front of it, I'm chatting on about Mick Jagger. I'm saying how I, I just read about an old bloke in the States who said, Mick Jagger, man, well, you know they're good, but it's Plastic Soul. So Plastic Soul was the germ of the rubber soul idea. In fact, at the end of the first take of the song I'm Down, the tape captures Paul exclaiming, exclaiming Plastic Soul, man. Plastic soul. Plastic soul. Rubber soul. Rolling stones. Mick Jagger. Something, something. Dark side. Back to the magical mystery tour. 
Cuckoo Kachu. I am the walrus. Just because other people see depths of whatever in it, you know, what does it really mean? I am the Eggman. You know, it could have been putting basing, basing for all I care. Just tongue in cheek, it's not that serious. Quotes from John Lennon. Um, anyways, what's what's the fascination? What's so good about um, uh, I am the walrus? And the answer is one, listen. Two, what's good about it? Everything. Three, what is it about? I have no idea. I'm guessing no one knows. Let's come together for the next song. We didn't know, or I didn't know at the time, because it was the last deal record that we would make, but it kind of felt a bit like we were reaching the end of the line. Quote George Martin. What about the Yellow Submarine? Yeah, not my favorite album. Uh, it's all too much. Written by George Harrison, the shoegaze creature. Uh, within you, without you. The next song on the list. The soundtrack, the soundtrack of the Summer of Love. Uh, a lot of kids were made uh, to the tones of this fantastic album. Uh, mark my words. The recording of this album took about 400 hours and was recorded between November 1966 and April 1967. Uh, one of the world's most known and discussed albums. Um, it's just a tiny, tiny bit um, uh, less good than Revolver, but it's uh, it's amazing. Well, have you heard in the bow? No, which one is that? It's this one. That would be nice. Quote, John Lennon. I chose another song called Hey Bulldog. This is a soundtrack to a movie with the same name, Jello Submarine. And it's uh, quite uh, despotat in Swedish. What's that? Yeah, people, don't, people just don't like this. Uh, and the A side uh, contains a, a few really good songs. Uh, and the B side is George Martin's like, movie tunes. Anyways, Hey, hey Bulldog is a, it's a sad song. Uh, I um, really didn't know it be before I started listening to all of the albums. Uh, it's a very strong song and to me it's um, it's the best song of the album. Uh, one of the things that I like about Jon's song writing style is its quirkiness and I think Hey Bulldog is very surreal and obviously I like the moment when we're in there and I'm harmonizing with him and I start being a dog, you know, and then he starts to say, you got any more? And like, and I like, wow, Paul McCartney, hey bulldog, blackbird. Um, after we spent many weeks uh, uh, meditating with uh, Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, Yogi in India, uh, Beatles uh, returned to record this album um, in May 1968. Uh, and they quickly understood they had too many songs for um, a single disc album, so they decided to release double. Uh, and as I said before, it's, uh, to, in my opinion, pretty far from being imperfect. I would have uh, cut the album down to one album, I think. Anyways, um, because this is a double album, it's really hard to decide what songs to have on a bus stop. Uh, even six songs would have been too hard. For the first time, I had to split myself three ways because we were recording at any one time in different studios. So you might have. You might have, you know, John in one studio and Paul in another, and George and Ringo sort of going in between. Quote George Martin. Beatles' first album, Please Please Me, 
I shows I saw her standing there. Uh, not one of my um, favorites, but uh, apparently most of the songs were recorded live in February in 1963. And that was to prove to York Martin that they had what it take to get out. A big uh, record deal and it's rumored to have been recorded in only 12 hours. Uh, Lennon McCartney wrote, uh, I saw her standing there and uh, as you all know it wasn't their last <laughs> written together. Uh, and yeah as many of their early albums they have a lot of covers here. Uh, Boys. Uh, Actually sung by Ringo, very good. Uh, Isley Brothers and Twist and Shout uh, quick, quickly uh, get uh, legend status, uh, mostly because of John Lennon's raspy voice. Uh, and hearsay say that um, John Lennon only needed one take for those two songs. Anyways, um, Love Me Do on this album was recorded by three drummers. Pete Best, the original drummer, um, he played on the first demo. Uh, the session drummer Adam White and Ringo Starr. So depending on what version you have of this album, there's... Uh, according to the internet, different uh, drummers. Moving back to the White Album, while Mike Chow gently weeps. All the experience that happened in India was all embodied in that album. Most of those songs were written in Rishikesh, like Julia and Blackbird and Dear Prudence. Quote by George Martin. Um, some small favorites, uh, Julia, Birthday, Jer Blues. Everybody got something to hide except me and my monkey. Revolution won, and dear Prudence, uh, they sadly don't stand a chance uh, on my best of. It's uh, really filled with awesome tunes. Uh, so other good songs, Mother Nature's Son, Happiness is a Warm Gun, I'm So Tired, and Long Long Long. Anyways, that's um, that concludes my my Beatles best of. Uh, I do have some more of uh, the solo stuff. I have John Lennon box set and I have uh, uh, George Harrison's uh, box set and I have... Uh, I'm not sure if I have any Paul McCartney. Anyways, what do you, did you think about my best of? Um, all of the songs are on Spotify. I will leave a link uh, to Spotify down below. Also, if you're interested, check out my blog. It's mostly in Swedish, but uh, anyway. I will be back with another band. Toodaloo.